Chapter 1 The History In 1899, Giovanni Agnelli and a group of entrepreneurs from Turin, northern Italy, founded the Fabrica Italiana Automobili Torino. From the outset, this company stood out for the skill and creativity of its engineers. The first model launched was the Fiat Quattro Cavalli, a compact car with a two-cylinder gasoline engine generating approximately four horsepower. Hence the name Quattro Cavalli. With a capacity for two passengers, it quickly became popular in Italy. In 1906, the company adopted the name Fiat. Shortly thereafter, Agnelli acquired the shares of his partners, taking full control. After years of growth, in 1910, Fiat was already the largest car manufacturer in Italy, a position it maintains to this day. Agnelli was not content to dominate only the automotive sector. Cultivating good relations with politicians in Rome, he began expanding his empire into other segments. In 1914, with Italy on the brink of World War I, Agnelli supported the rising politician Benito Mussolini. This marked the beginning of a major expansion for Fiat, which began manufacturing trucks, machine guns, aircraft engines, and ambulances. The company, which had 50 employees in 1899, now employed 4,000 people. In 1916, Fiat began building the legendary Lingato factory, a vast industrial complex on the outskirts of Turin, notable for its structure. The factory even had a test track on its roof and, after its inauguration in 1923, became the largest car factory in the world. In addition to car production, Fiat followed in the footsteps of the American Ford and manufactured tractors. The Fiat 702 was launched in 1918, just one year after the Ford's and F, considered the world's first mass-produced tractor. In 1919, Fiat Trator SPA was founded, focusing exclusively on the production of agricultural tractors. Decades later, it would become part of the global giant CNH after mergers with Ford, Case, and New Holland. Have you ever stopped to think about what unites Fiat, Ferrari, Juventus, and the Economics Magazine? All of them are under the control of one of the most influential families in Europe, the Agnelli. Through their holding company, EXOR, the Agnelli family has around 28 billion euros invested in a wide range of businesses, from tractors to luxury footwear. To illustrate the magnitude of this family empire, it is enough to mention that Stellantis, which encompasses brands like Fiat, Peugeot, Chrysler, and Jeep, achieved a turnover of 178 billion euros in 2022. Additionally, in the automotive sector, the Agnelli family also owns Iveco and CNH Industrial, which controls the Case and New Holland brands. In August 2023, the family announced its most recent investment, acquiring 15% of Philips shares for $2.5 billion. It was this news that sparked our interest and led us to delve into our research on the Agnelli Empire and how they managed to maintain it for 124 years. In this investigation, we discovered that Fiat was not limited to the manufacture of automobiles, but also ventured into the production of tractors, trucks, planes, trains, and even weapons. Additionally, we found some controversies related to the group's companies, such as the family's connection to Benito Mussolini and their partnership with dictator Muammar Gaddafi in the 70s. Welcome to the history of the Agnelli, the business dynasty that has dominated Italy for over a century. Chapter 2 Enjoy Life, My Son In just two decades, Fiat evolved from a small vehicle manufacturer into a diversified industrial conglomerate. Its operations included Fiat Veiculos Industriali, which would become Iveco, Fiat Veicoli Commerciali, responsible for light commercial vehicles, Fiat Ferroviaria, famous for manufacturing the Pendolino model sold to Alstom in 2000, and Fiat Aviazone, which merged with Airfar to create Era Italia. Additionally, 
Fiat had several subsidiaries, including the traditional automotive components manufacturer Magneti Morelli and later, the motorcycle manufacturer Vespa. Outside the industry, Giovanni Agnelli expanded his empire into the media with the acquisition of the La Stampa newspaper, and in the world of sports, he purchased Juventus in 1923. In 1927, to organize all these investments, he created the Instituto Financiario Industrial, IFI, the legendary Agnelli family holding, which later became EXOR. With a significant increase in wealth and influence, Giovanni Agnelli, nicknamed El Senator after becoming a life senator in the Italian parliament, raised uncertainties about his succession. This arose due to the death of his daughter, Anacita Caterina, in 1928, and the lack of interest from his son, Eduardo Agnelli, in the family business. Eduardo, known for his party lifestyle and passion for Juventus, the family's football club died in a plane crash in Switzerland in 1935, leaving Giovanni Agnelli without direct heirs to take over the family empire. At the time, his eldest grandson, Johnny Agnelli, was still young and unprepared to lead. After El Senator's death in December 1945, control of the conglomerate passed to Vittorio Valletta, his right-hand man, who had no blood ties to the Agnelli family. Before his death, Giovanni Agnelli gave advice to his grandson Johnny, have fun until you get tired for a few years. And Johnny followed it to the letter. With an estimated inheritance of $1 billion in 1945 and an annual pension of $1 million, Johnny Agnelli enjoyed life. He skied in St. Moritz, Switzerland, and spent weekends at the luxurious Villa Leopolda, the family property on the French Riviera. He loved starting the weekend by diving into the Mediterranean Sea in his helicopter. His passion for speed led him to turn the streets of Monte Carlo into a Formula One track aboard his Ferrari. Johnny was a regular presence at Europe's most extravagant parties, earning the nickname Avocado due to his law degree. In 1952, however, a serious accident almost took his life during a collision of his Ferrari with a meat-carrying truck after a party in Monte Carlo. He suffered severe leg fractures. After the accident, Johnny Agnelli adopted a more cautious lifestyle. In 1953, he married Princess Morella Caracciolo. Even so, for a few more years, he did not involve himself in the management of the family businesses, which continued to thrive under the leadership of Vittorio Valletta. The conglomerate maintained its rapid growth and remained the largest industrial group in Italy and one of the largest in Europe. Chapter 3 How They Bought Ferrari it was only in the year 1966, when Johnny, the heir of the Agnelli dynasty, reached the age of 45, that he definitively assumed the position of president of Fiat immediately after Vittorio Valletta's retirement. The official announcement took place on April 30th, 1966, a Saturday morning, during the annual assembly of Fiat before 489 company shareholders who expressed uncertainties about Johnny's suitability for the role. At that time, Fiat employed 130,000 workers and faced questions about whether the aristocratic heir, known for his playboy lifestyle, could manage one of the largest industrial conglomerates in Europe. However, Johnny Agnelli pressed on, aware of the enormous responsibility upon him. When his grandfather passed away in 1945, Fiat produced 3,260 cars annually. By then, that same number was produced in just one working day. However, Fiat was only a part of the Agnelli wealth, which held direct and indirect stakes in about 25% of all companies listed on the Italian stock exchange. Fiat represented the Italian industrial triumph bringing pride to the city of Turin, whose population grew from 700,000 inhabitants in 1950 to 1,800,000 at the peak of the 1980s. During his tenure, Johnny Agnelli faced challenges and achievements, periods of expansion and crises, 
but managed to sustain the growth of the Agnelli family empire. One of his notable successes occurred in 1969 when Fiat acquired 50% of Ferrari, increasing this stake to 90% after the death of Enzo Ferrari in the late 1980s. Interestingly, today, Ferrari is the most valuable jewel in the Agnelli family portfolio. In the 1970s, Johnny faced turbulence due to the oil crisis and increased competition, leading Fiat to lose significant market share in the European market. To illustrate the impact of the crisis, Fiat car sales dropped 40% in the early months of 1974 when oil prices quadrupled. In response, Johnny Agnelli took a drastic step in 1976, announcing the sale of 10% of Fiat's capital for $415 million to the government of Libya, then led by dictator Muammar Gaddafi. The news that a dictator would become the second largest shareholder of Fiat surprised everyone. The alliance with Libya persisted until 1986 but ended due to international pressure and the loss of a Fiat subsidiary contract with the United States government due to Gaddafi. The Agnelli family was compelled to repurchase part of Libya's shares in the company. The operation was profitable for the dictator, turning his investment of $415 million into over $3 billion in just 10 years. In the following years, despite the ups and downs of the global automotive industry, with periods of profit and loss in vehicle operations, Johnny and his brother, Umberto Agnelli, increasingly diversified the family's businesses. In the automotive sector, Fiat expanded its presence in the luxury market by acquiring Alfa Romeo and the remaining shares of Ferrari in the late 1980s, in addition to the purchase of Maserati. Chapter 3 Diversifying Ventures In other sectors, the Agnelli family engaged in a wide range of activities, from insurance to real estate investments, including the ownership of part of the iconic Rockefeller Center in New York in the 1990s. Johnny Agnelli's era came to an end in 2003 when he passed away due to prostate cancer. His brother, Umberto, assumed the group's presidency but unfortunately succumbed to cancer the following year, in 2004. The situation of Fiat, which was not at its best in the early 2000s, worsened after the death of the Agnelli brothers, raising doubts about the future of the family company. The challenge of leading the company fell on the shoulders of John Elkan, Johnny's grandson, who at the time was only 28 years old. Chapter 4 John Elkan, despite his young age, quickly proved to be a talented entrepreneur. He took control of the family's holding, now called EXOR, after a major restructuring, consolidating all of the Agnelli investments. In the group's main company, Fiat, he appointed Sergio Marchioni as CEO. Marchioni led one of the most successful operations in the history of the automotive industry. In five years as CEO, he reversed Fiat's losses and in 2009 orchestrated the merger with Chrysler on the brink of bankruptcy after the 2008 financial crisis. The merger, resulting in Fiat Chrysler Automobiles FCA, was a triumph, expanding Fiat's brand portfolio. While Marchioni led FCA, John Elkan, discreet unlike his grandfather, quietly expanded the family empire. Elkin gradually acquired significant assets, such as the respected British magazine The Economist, the French luxury brand Christian Louboutin, and the reinsurer partner Re, sold for over $9 billion last year, among other businesses. Additionally, he reorganized the capital structure of the group's companies, including the spin-off of Iveco and CNH Industrial and the IPO of Ferrari in 2015. In 2021, FCA merged with the French group PSA, owner of brands like Peugeot and Citroën, creating Stellantis, the fifth largest automaker in the world. In addition to traditional sectors, EXOR also invested in technology startups since 2018, including Brex, 
valued at $12 billion and founded by two Brazilians. The Agnelli family's wealth, now in the fifth generation, is impressive. What are your thoughts on this family's history? Share your comments below and don't forget to see what other subscribers are saying. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, turning on notifications. I post new videos every day, and I'll see you in the next one.